Broadsword calling Danny boy. Broadsword calling Danny boy. Come in, Danny boy. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. You are always most welcome. Well, a little, just a little line there from that iconic film Where Eagles Dare with Richard Burton and uh, Clint Eastwood and, uh, and uh, Sir Michael Holden, of course. Um, you might remember that uh, this aircraft was at the, on the intro, basically, of the film, being flown across the Alps. And it was quite iconic within the film, uh, and the, all the titles roll with the iconic music. And of course, it, as soon as you see one of those with the sort of snow camouflage, it, your mind goes straight to that film, I think, for most of us, doesn't it, really? Anyway, so it's Hella we're going to be reviewing today. Now, I've not done a Hella kit for... Wow, I have, I've done one? I've, I've not, I'm not sure I've done any, but I've certainly had a Hella kit before. I had the... You should know that Hella have had a sort of a tool sharing arrangement for years gone back with both Airfix and with Ravel, so they've, they've actually shared some kits and reboxed some kits. Things like the Airfix Lightning, the Airfix Jaguar, these were all, uh, a lot of them were tooled in, in France for, by Hella. So, not the biggest fan. To me, they've always seemed a bit like a French version of Ravel, and it explains why they've had a, a bit of a partnership, perhaps. Anyway, we won't let that hold that against them. We'll have a, an open mind and see what we have here. Uh, they're actually they're actually from Trun in Normandy, which is uh, huh, uh, it's quite a famous area where they had the uh, the Falaise Pocket battle in August. Gosh, it's 79 years ago, actually. And, uh, this week, as I'm recording this, Trun was an area where this Falaise Pocket battle took place and uh, a bit of a massacre took place of the German uh, 7th Army, wasn't it, I think? Anyway, <coughs> I'm digressing. So that's where they're from, northern France. We've just wondering if they've got a manufacturer date. You see, I think they're doing a Ravel on us here. I'm trying to <coughs> get my head around what the age of this kit is. Uh, some of you will be looking on scale mates as we speak. We'll see if there's anything inside about it. Okay, so it's got like a uh, almost like a pizza box style, style opening, you know. It's like a pizza box actually as well, doesn't it? Recycled cardboard. We've got some clear parts. We've got Heller's Guide to Heller's Products, which we'll have a quick look at in a minute. And we've got their, uh, their decals. Now, this kit was loaned to us by a good friend of the channel, David. So, thanks a lot, David. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I thought, mm, no. normally hell, I'm like, oh, no, not really, but I thought we'd have a look. So, it's almost like having a fish and chips or a pizza out of this box. Whoops, I don't want to knock over the, uh, the Portuguese flag. We'll get our French flag out, because it's hella today. So, we'll put that out front central. There we go. And we'll see what we've got. So, I think we'll start with the, uh, so look at the product guide for forthcoming presentations. Um, get the feeling that this is, yeah, it's data 21, I think it's got 21 marked on it. So it's reasonably recent, fairly recent. Um, so I'm, I'm sure there's going to be things that you can, can get your hands on. I just remembered another Hella kit was the Concorde I built, the Airfix Concorde, they shared with that as well. Mm, yeah, it's not one of their finest, but anyway, let's have a look. <laughs> Don't be too negative, let's have a look at this. Mustn't judge their previous failings on this one. Vice versa. So we've got a Fougere Fulger Magister there in 70 second scale. We've got a Messerschmitt 108. ME 108, looks quite cool. Then there's a Focke Wolf uh, Stosser, an FW 56A. Spotter planes, usually they were on trainer planes. Uh, a Swedish uh, a Tunman, Saab, weren't they? Saab Tunman, I think you should say. A Grumman Hellcat, that's quite cool, right in the Japanese in the Pacific. And then we've got a Trojan, a Fennec Trojan, uh, which is a training plane. Another Saab, seems to be doing quite a few Swedish subjects, don't they? A Saab 91. Uh, Special Alouette, which is the famous helicopter used for years in the, as it shows it in the Alps, you know. Then we've got another Saab, we've got a JA37 Vigan. Who doesn't like a Vigan? That sounds interesting. 
I've got a few lots of share with Airfix again. And then we've got a Lockheed Constellation. Again, 72nd, we've got a, a Warning Star, an EC-121, Maritime Early Warning Aircraft. Uh, what's it say? Discover the world of Hella, there you go. And then we've got a Block 174, not one I'm very familiar with, if I'm honest. And then a Douglas C-118 uh, Liftmaster. Uh, another Saab Lanson. Uh, Super Puma Helicopter, of course, which was shared with the British. And I think that's an Airfix too, but I'm not sure. Then we've got the Junkers uh, JU-80, sorry, JU-52 that we're going to look at today. And then we've got the Constellation, the C-121 Constellation Mats. Quite a good range, isn't it? And then we've got the Flying Dutchman Constellation option. Then we've got Concorde. This is at one, one, one twenty-fifth scale. Okay, interesting scale. Slightly unusual, isn't it? That? And then there's an Airbus A320. And then we've got the one seventy-second scale Concorde. That's the one I built. Not, mm, not that great. Not that great. Not terrible. But, mm. It's challenging. It's got no windows for the uh, the passengers. Mac 2 without any windows is not recommended. Anyway, <laughs> a Nord. What is that? A Nord? Nautilus. I, I don't know that aircraft at all. So some interesting subjects. Um, worth a little bit of a nosy, wasn't it, I think? Uh, what's it say here? Oh, okay. Uh, you've got the uh, online instructions for your building. It's got here. How about that? So, let's have a look at the old instructions for the JU-52. We can... If you don't want to do it in the uh, the winter scheme, of course, you can always do it in Battle of Britain scheme because it was also on the intro for the Battle of Britain, wasn't it? So two iconic war films where this aircraft flying was the opening scene, uh, the opening proper scene and title scene of the film. So, kit number 80380. A lot of discover the world of our uh, paints, acrylic paints of Hella. There we go. Okay. And then we've got the actual construction. So let's have a look at this. Uh, I say I've got rather mixed experiences of Hella. Uh, they've not been too great really, but we'll see what we get. Maybe they'll surprise me, you never know. So we've got the building up your internal, um, the front cabin, uh, flight deck as it were, the uh, pilot and the navigator and co pilot. Then you're building up your engines. Quite a busy, a bit like we had the other week with the uh, models, but quite a busy frame. Um, recommending Hella paints, which isn't very helpful. And then, yeah, you're building up both sides of both engines. It's a tri-motor, obviously, on the uh, on the JU-52, one of the things that was kind of unique. So we've got our fuselage going together and your cabin section going in the middle. This aircraft does seem to have some windows, so that's a move forward from the Concorde. And then we've got the main glass house on the front. Um, it's not the best quality printing, I have to say, in terms of detail, trying to see these parts. You know, that's not great, is it? Have a look at this, see what I mean? The detail of it's a little bit odd. Not the clearest uh, diagrams I've ever seen. Anyway, as I say, you are getting some, some window glass, so that's got to be good. Then on the next page you're going to bring in your wings and your um, your tri-motor, three motors are coming on. Top and bottom wing. Oh, it looks like we've got landing slats and, uh, sorry, flaps uh, and ailerons, which is nice. And you've also got elevators, so that's nice at this scale, isn't it? It's really good. So, give them fair due where it's, credit where it's due. We've also got a gun emplacement uh, turret on the top. I mean, that's quite cold in the winter. And then you've got, um, yeah, you've got your advice of how to use your decals. And then you get your colour scheme. Um, and it's the pilot school of visibility. Pilot school, the German pilot school. So visibility, no visibility. No, it doesn't say where they're based. Anyway, there we go. And then on the back we've got, um, oh, visit, visitors online. Okay, so yeah, download instructions online. That's quite cool. Right then, hmm. The, the way it looks in terms of the parts looks okay to be honest. It's got 
window glass, it's got flaps, it's got elevators uh, and ailerons, which is nice. Don't necessarily expect that at this scale. Uh, just, just not the best printed, that's all. We've got our decals here. Some little nosy at these. Something new. Doesn't say who they're printed by, it just has Heller's name on it, so perhaps they're their own. And uh, of course, we have got no uh, no fast sticker on the tail, which unfortunately, uh, like Airfix, I think they're in agreement with Airfix. It's another thing that you know, annoys us. We've talked about this, I won't go over old ground, but that symbol can be produced in a way that doesn't offend anybody. And then what you do with the uh, various little parts, you know, the things that Tamiyar do and Edouard do and ICM do, there are ways of doing it in a way that will not offend people, anybody, even the most sensitive really. So why can't Heller or Airfix do it, I don't know. Or Ravel. Anyway, um, we have got here clear parts. I think, uh, as it's not my kit, I don't think I'll open these, to be honest. Um, and there aren't that many of them, but you've basically got You've got more windows down one side on the JU-52 than you do on the other. I think it's because there's like a, uh, there's less windows because I think there's like a cabin that's got the toilets in it and things like that. Um, but as you can see, they're actually decent. They're all right. Nothing exceptional, but they don't look problematic. For a 172, that, that clear work looks pretty decent to me. Even through the bag that looks pretty clear and nice. So yeah, and you've got the little shield there for the uh, for the gunner on the top, and then you've got these uh, these optional sorry extra windows I should say that are on the other side that form and one goes in the door. Very nice. So let us have a look at the actual main kit itself. It still feels like a, a fish and chip box or a pizza box. This does. <laughs> Let's see what we've got then. Let's take out. Oh, there's no bag, they just come loose. I don't know if that's typical with Heller or not, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'd like that too much. <coughs> so, move the box over there for a second. Let's see what we've got. Oh, well, actually, it looks rather nice to be fair. Um, yes, have a look at this. See what you think. Some rather nice detail on this uh, this wing because it's a corrugated steel uh, wing. Uh, these aircraft were de designed to be very utilitarian and very quick and easy to build using the least advanced materials, you know, because they were built in their thousands, these planes were. Uh, here you've got your elevators and uh, tailplanes. And again, there's a good contour there, don't know if you can make that out. The corrugation effect is there, you've got the, you can feel the corrugation here on the wing. Nice effect actually. Yeah, quite like that. Same on the other side. Uh, this is the lower wing we're actually looking at. Okay. That seems alright, that's better than I expected if I'm honest. Then we've got the, uh, the fuselage. Oh, it's quite big. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's rather nice, again. And look at the way they've done the uh, the rudder has been very well done. Again, you can feel the corrugation really, really clearly marked and well defined corrugations all the way down the fuselage. That's really good. I like it. It's got real character to it, you know. The other side. Again. Lots of uh, good panel lines, the doors very clearly marked. Looks a little bit off centre that door window to me, but maybe that's the design, I don't know. I'm not that familiar with JU 52s, I'm honest. But again, you got that tail, really well done. The uh, very sort of industrial looking hinges for the uh, rudder. But it looks good, it looks real. It's cool. And then over here we've got the internals for the uh, the cockpit and the cabin area with the, the door through to the cockpit and uh, cabin door at the side. Very good. Then we've got the uh, lower, sorry, back a bit, the lower fuselage section again, very heavily corrugated again, different 
pictures of corrugation, but very detailed. That's actually really nice. This is exceeding my expectations, which were pretty low, if I'm quite honest. So it's looking like it might get a decent score after all, much against what I expected to be the case. Now this aircraft has, it has flaps and it has ailerons separately. So, and again there's some nice detail there, where those uh, heavy hinge points are for the flaps and ailerons. Looks really, really nice. And now we get into the engines and these look really excellent, 70 second scale, look at this. Wow, I'm impressed. Look at that. All the cylinder heads are there. Uh, and then the, uh, the cooling, uh, cooling fans for the cylinders. And the, all the shrouding is here. That is nice. That is surprisingly good, I have to say. Didn't expect to be that impressed. And over here we've got our, this is the top wing now of course, and yeah you can see again all the lovely uh, corrugation, you can almost imagine the sound of walking along that can't you? <laughs> hmm, that's really good. And then for last but not least we have got the final sprue which has got the, the other top wing on it, again lots of lovely detail, and it's got the top fuselage with the cutout for the, the gunner turret area. Oh, the gun is in placement rather than turret. And then all the other parts. So we've got all the tri-motor propeller blades here near my finger. And then we've got our main gear. And lots of little detailed parts including the tail wheel. Uh, the pilot seats. Just to add a bit. Pilot seats. Yeah. Aerial. Antenna aerial and the gear, uh, some of the gear legs and the, the supports here uh, for the rear wing, uh, the wing supports yeah, uh, undercarriage supports I should say, because the undercarriage is permanently down of course on these it's not retractable well, I have to say I am pleasantly surprised by this kit I am most pleasantly surprised by it thought it was going to be, you know well, another one of those like a Revell, a traditional bad Revell. It's not, it's actually really decent. That's got good detail. Um, even on things like the seat there, it's got, it's got, it's got decent detail for a 70 second scale. Much better than we have, you know, perhaps come to know in the past. I like it. I am very pleasantly surprised by that kit. I think it's going to do quite well today, much better than I had anticipated. So, I'll get back in its pizza box, or fish and chip box. <laughs> Not sure about that. Not sure I like the packaging that much, but anyway, pop that back in there, it's safe. And we'll get our instructions. Which, yeah, the instructions weren't the best, and yeah, not, not the nicest clarity. It could have made a little bit more effort there. Info, info sheet's quite good about the other products. And there we have it, so that's the Junkers Tri-Motor, the JU-52 3M. Well, I'm going to give it 9 out of 10, I think. I think that was really quite a pleasant surprise. Not the scary bad kit I was expecting. Don't know how it goes together, but looks nice. Looks nice. Looks like it's been well designed, to be fair. So, that's it. 9 out of 10 from me. I think that's pretty good. Uh, better than we anticipated. Well done, Hella. Makes me interested to look at perhaps some more of their stuff over time. And I know that they're they're having a bit of a renaissance. This is about this new yellow branding they're coming out with. Um, you know, our friends over in France. Let's put their flag out here. France. Vive la France! Well done, Hella. We liked that actually. Yes, quite nice to have a good to have some positive things to talk about model kits after my recent Revel Hell. <laughs> Very well done, Hella. So Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you give me a thumbs up and give me a 10 out of 10. One more uh, by giving me a like. <laughs> uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, please ding the notification bell if you haven't done because you will get the, you'll be one of the first to know when I've uploaded a new video which you might find of interest. Uh, and until next time, we've got plenty of more interesting things to come through. Till next time, please look after yourselves. Stay safe. Take care. Thanks a lot. And bye for now.